talk this day about just one of the verses specifically from this reading. Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. Good morning. For those of you who are my age, you know what a VCR machine is. For those who do not know, those are machines that had large tapes, and you put them into the tape machine, and you can make them go fast. Now, in today's world, of course, we don't have VCR machines anymore, or Blu-ray discs aren't anymore, MP3 players. Now there's things like Netflix and Spotify and Fire Sticks and all of the kinds of things I don't even yet know about, or especially don't know how to use. Anyway, on those VCR tapes, you could watch the tape in high speed. Of course, the sound was not there, but that's the picture I want you to have in your mind today. One year ago was Christmas. We did not know about COVID-19. Last Easter, we knew about the coronavirus, and we did not gather here in the church. One month ago was Thanksgiving, and once again, we did not gather. Thursday night was Christmas Eve, and we did not celebrate in this building as well. Two days ago was Christmas Day, and once again, we did not gather. We were not in one place. We were in our homes. We were in places where COVID-19 has said that we are to stay in order that we might be safe and secure. But this is the story of the birth of Christ. It happens whether or not we are at home or where we may be. It's the story of Mary and Joseph bringing their child into this world, their firstborn son, to the temple and also to bring that child to the temple eight days after he was born to do for him as the law of the Lord expected. They offered a pair of turtle doves. They offered two young pigeons as a sacrifice for the redemption of the Lord. Yes, the sacrifice revealed their faith that they were dedicating their firstborn son for the Lord's work. It was what they do. What was in their heart was revealed by what they did. This is what I want you to prayerfully think about today with me. What does your life reveal about God's place in your heart? Even though you're at home, maybe, maybe you're filled with fear of what the corona might do to your life, what's in your heart? What kind of thoughts are coming out of your heart? Do your words and thoughts reveal complaining, or reveal anger, or reveal depression, or reveal fear? Or is there a corner of your heart that still lovingly holds Jesus? I want you to say together with me, Reveal God's place in my heart. Say that again. Reveal God's place in my heart. Now, how do mothers and fathers feel when a child is born, when the mother gives birth to the baby? Well, they're proud of the newborn, right? Giving birth at times is difficult. The father's not allowed in the hospital during this COVID time. But some things still are true for husbands and wives, no matter the condition of life. The same for single mothers, single fathers as well. How do they feel? They feel proud, right? You can see some daddies even posting pictures that say, my son, saying further, look what I've got. The challenge for new moms and dads is really to see their baby, however, as a gift from God. Whether the child was conceived as an act of love between husband and wife, or between a love-starved woman and a love-starved man, the child comes as an opportunity to correct life, so that they might be proud of what God has given to them, and how his promise was fulfilled for them. Just imagine how we could have described Mary having just delivered baby. No help from a midwife, no call to 9-11, no help from an EMT. As far as we know, Joseph did it all. That's what we think. How Mary's delivery happened, however, is not important. No news of the contractions, no news of the umbilical cord wrapped around the head of Jesus, no description of his first cry, nothing like that. But listen and think of these words of a reporter that might describe in your imagination what it was like at the manger and what Mary may have been thinking when she held the baby Jesus. A reporter from Jerusalem might have said it this way. Good morning, Harold Avers reporting from Bethlehem. My heart skips a beat when I report this story. There was no need last night for a reveal party for this man and woman. 
There was no need for popping a balloon to see what color paper would come out, blue for a boy or pink for a girl. Here was a young girl who had traveled on a donkey all the way from Nazareth. She was engaged to this man who had come to Bethlehem for the census. I interviewed a person who had heard the man from Nazareth talk to the innkeeper, explaining that his bride to whom he was engaged was having labor pains and they had to find a place for her to give birth. And she was going to have a baby boy. My source told me that this man, whose name is Joseph, said that an angel told his fiance and told him to name the baby Jesus. They knew it would be a boy. So here we are in Bethlehem. The human being who best understood what God was and what he was doing was a teenage girl. She understood it best in a smelly stable. Her name was Mary. Joseph stood next to her. They had not yet slept together. They had not consummated their, their marriage. What a story this is. Some shepherds told me they saw Mary looking right into the face of the baby. She sees her Lord, they said, her, her majesty, his majesty. She couldn't even take her eyes off of him. Somehow Mary seemed to know that she was holding God in the flesh. So this is he, she thinks. She remembers the words of the angel who said, of his kingdom there will be no end. I don't know about you. But this is a story for the ages. I'll never forget it. That's it for today. Harold Avery's reporting for the Jerusalem News. Now the story that the reporter told us, what did it mean for them and for the world and for you and me today? Let me tell you. This baby looks nothing like a king. His cry, though strong and healthy, is still the helpless and piercing cry of a baby. A baby born in poverty, no place to lay his head. Yes, this is what I observe. This is how God came near. In the words Mary herself said when she realized in the beginning that she was pregnant by God's spirit, she said, the Lord has shown strength with his arm. The Lord has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He's put down the mighty from their thrones, lifted up those of low degree. He's filled the hungry with good things, sent the rich away empty. Could this little baby be the mighty king? Could this little baby be able to do all these things? Could the lives of people in the world be changed by this little baby? Can your life or my life be changed? In your heart and mind, what do you imagine as the meaning of this story? Remember what God's Word says to us in Ephesians 3, chapter, chapter 3, verse 20. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or imagine, to him be the glory. Doesn't having a baby make your imagination come to life? When first hearing the Christmas story, it seems to be about just having a baby. For many it's over within a few minutes, and then back to everyday life with new responsibilities. It's something like how quickly Christmas is over for so many people. They keep, but let's keep the focus not just on the birth, but let's think beyond it, starting with the birth. Not just a father and a mother, not just a baby, but a family. Yes, and the need for a family to be thankful for a newborn. Parents to be thankful for the newborn. Now the work in the drudgery begins, however, with scraping together enough money to buy food and diapers, filling out DHS forms for a bridge card, Whatever it needs to be made, getting the arrangements ready for child care, child support, all these things that might come into our lives today. Yes, conceiving the baby and giving birth to the baby is the easiest part in one sense. There is more to this Christmas story, however, than the birth. This baby, conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and what shows this new life worthwhile is that the parents would thank God for the gift that they would thank God for the privilege of having this baby and being able to raise this baby as a gift from God. Thanksgiving, you see, is a part of the right attitude of waiting for the baby. Giving thanks is the right attitude while holding the newborn baby. Giving thanks is the right attitude for committing to raise the baby to know himself or herself as a child of God. It starts with thanksgiving in the hearts of the parents. For Mary and Joseph, it included figuring out how they were going to live, how to feed themselves, 
The baby Jesus had no problem. He would nurse at his mother's breast. His food was provided. But protection from the elements, having a safe place to stay, doing what the law of the Lord demanded, that was for the parents to put their thankful hearts now into action. Mary and Joseph were not poverty stricken, but didn't have enough money to buy a space that night. So they had to accept a handout from the innkeeper. They took some room away from the animals, yes, but they were thankful that they had a space. On the eighth day, they did as the law of God demanded. They circumcised their son to show that he was part of the chosen people of God. They circumcised their son so that they would be able then to say, his name is Jesus, as the angels had told them. Before they were going home to return to Nazareth, they took this baby, their son Jesus, to the temple to offer him to the Lord, paid for two young pigeons, sacrificed for the life of their son, so that they would say in their hearts and minds, we give him to the Lord, so that everything revealed in Mary's heart would now be known by others. Now comes the question, what did she have in her heart? Here's what she said when the angel told her that she would give birth to Emmanuel, God with us, her son. In her heart and mind, she remembered and held close what the angel had said to her, what the angel had revealed to her when he said, he will be great, would be called the Son of the Most High God. Yes, Mary kept all these things in her heart. Everything the angel Gabriel had told her, everything the angels had announced at the birth of her son, she kept thanking and praising God by remembering with thanksgiving all that God had done and all he would continue to do through this Son of God who was in the flesh. Now we come to what happens when parents start at some point in their lives to show thankfulness to God for their child. Now comes the purpose, if you will, of what we're here for today. Comes the purpose of the newborn himself. Mary and Joseph present Jesus, as we said, to the Lord, so that as a sign of their faith in the Lord, they would give him to the Lord for the Lord's work. Mary, as I said, had heard the angel Gabriel say, it's recorded for us in Luke 1, and his kingdom will never end. On that day, an old man, Simeon, was in the temple. The Spirit of God had revealed it in his heart that he had it in his mind and his heart that he wouldn't die until he had seen the Lord's Christ, the Lord's anointed, the Lord's chosen one. And so it was that when Mary and Joseph presented Jesus in the temple with the sacrifice, that Simeon, a righteous and devout man of God, Simeon had been filled with the Spirit and he came to the temple and now filled with the Spirit more, he said, can I hold your baby? And he took the baby Jesus up in his arms. And Simeon thanked and blessed the Lord and said, Lord, now you're letting your servant depart this life in peace. Just as you said, I've seen with my own eyes the salvation you've prepared for the people of the earth. A light to be revealed to the Gentiles. A light to be revealed to unbelievers. And a light that leads people of faith to give you the glory. And then Simeon said, Mary and Joseph, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is opposed so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. Yes, Mary's heart would be pierced as she watched her 33-year-old son suffering and dying on Calvary's cross. But she never stopped thanking God for choosing her to be the mother of our Lord giving thanks for God keeping his promise. That's what was in her heart. Today we still talk about the pain and suffering this mother experienced seeing her son arrested unjustly, beaten and charged guilty, even though he was innocent. This baby born in Bethlehem's manger is the son of man who died on Calvary's cross. This baby is the one who dies not because he failed his father, but because he obeyed his father's will. This baby is the one who was born for you and me. It's about the death and the resurrection of the Son of God that Mary birthed. She kept the thoughts of her son in her heart. Her love for him never ended. In this time when we celebrate the birth of Jesus, we, the children of God, are to look into our hearts as well. 
Today you're hearing about how much God loves you. He has the most important gift for you to have in your heart. He has given you himself. Christmas is not what you did or did not do to get to feel more like Christmas. His love comes from outside into your heart. There's nothing that can keep him from living in your life, nothing except you. To keep Jesus in your heart, to keep Christmas in your heart, you must ask him to remain in your heart. There's an old prayer that makes this very real from a song that we've sung sometimes here in the church. I'm going to say the whole thing and then I'm going to ask you to repeat after me one line at a time. Ah, dearest Jesus, holy child, prepare a bed soft, undefiled, a quiet chamber set apart for you to dwell within my heart. Now it's your turn to say after me. Ah, dearest Jesus, holy child, prepare a bed soft, undefiled, a quiet chamber set apart for you to dwell within my heart. So do you remember with thanksgiving the pain and suffering Jesus did on Calvary's cross for you? He loved you so much that he wants to be born in you. This is what Jesus meant when he said to Nicodemus, you must be born anew. Once Nicodemus gave up all the claims that he had to be something by his own worth, and he gave himself to Jesus and believed Jesus, Jesus was born in his heart. Remember, after Jesus died on the cross, it was now coming close to be evening time. Remember how important it was that Nicodemus now was a man who lived not because he had everything together because he was a person of faith. Remember how he came with Joseph of Arimathea to take the body of Jesus down from the cross. The body of Jesus was dead, but the love of Jesus was alive in the heart of Nicodemus. Not everyone says yes to the birth of Jesus. When Jesus is born in the hearts and lives of people, it is not to divide fathers and mothers, sons and daughters, grandchildren and grandparents, but what is in our hearts does divide us. What is in our hearts, if it is fear that rules your heart, then you will be divided. If it's bitterness that rules your heart, you will be divided. If it's hatred of someone else in your heart, you will be divided. Jesus wants to be born in you as a light to you and to unbelievers around you. He's the reason for the season to give God the praise. Not being one in heart and mind means that there will be separation, there will be division. Not seeing Jesus in the manger as your Savior, that leaves your heart with an empty space. Not wanting Jesus to be who he is, your friend, your Savior, that leaves you in the dark. What is in your heart reveals who and what is first in your life. So the coming of Jesus to be born in us is the gift of Christmas. Here's the way to discover Jesus in your heart. Number one, listen to the story of Jesus. Trust that he is born to be your savior. Nothing that you do gets him to come to you. He is born for you. Number two, thank God that he loves you and wants to be with you. Yes, thank him for everything, the good, the bad, the ugly, the joyful things. Thank him for everything because you're talking to him. Thank him for his promise to love you. Number three, find a Bible. Read God's word off each day is a good goal. All to keep the story of Jesus growing in your heart. Here are some words from God's word to remember. You know them, maybe you've heard them from John 3, 16. God loved the world so much that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not be lost but have everlasting life. Those words are for you. Number four, ask God every day to be with you. Ask God to be with you each and every day to show you the way in life. Lord, lead and teach me your way. Show me the way to go. Jesus hears you, and he will come into your heart if you ask him. He grew up filling his heart and life with God, his Father, with all the words that came from the prophets of old, the words that were the true word of God, he grew in those words, listening to his father. He grew up knowing that his father kept his word. 
He trusted the words his father gave to him when his parents taught him. Finally, Jesus did what he believed. Jesus, you see, is the reason for the season. He's the reason for us to be here today. Believe what he says. Receive what he gives. Celebrate what he has done for you and what he promises to do for the world. He has made you first in his heart. He loves you as it says, with his heart, his soul, his mind. And he asks you to love the Lord with your heart, your soul, your mind, and everything in you. He has made you first in his heart. He loves you then, as I said, with everything. So much that he reached out his arms and died for you. What you find in your heart, if it is darkness, then if what your heart is doing that wants to lead you away and put you in dark corners, if it is not fed by what God has promised you, you will find your heart being empty. But my friends, He is born for you. He wants to be the most important part of your life. Thoughts from many hearts are revealed every day. What is in your heart gets revealed by what you say and by what you do. What is in your heart reveals to others who is first in your life. And that, whether you believe it or not, whether Jesus was born, suffered, died, and was raised again, it will show what is in your heart will be revealed. He wants to show you one day at a time that he can and wants to live in your heart. He wants to give you eternal, everlasting life. He wants to show you one day at a time that he will be with you and never leave you. He wants to give you the hope and the peace that comes from trusting him. Pray then that Jesus will come into your life. Pray then that people will see Jesus in your life. Pray that Jesus is revealed as the life, as the one who gives you life, as the one who wants the world to be saved. In Jesus' name, amen. We're blessed to be able to talk to God. That's what prayer is called. So we're going to talk to God now in a time of prayer. Heavenly Father, your word tells us that all things work together for good to those who love you. This day we celebrate what you did for us by being born into our world. You are perfect. You obeyed your Father and joined us human beings, even though we reject you and act like you have abandoned us. There are things we try to do, O oh Father, to get your attention. We want you to help us, but it seems to us that you're never satisfied. At least that's what we think. Yet we've seen the faithfulness of your Son, Jesus. We saw what he did for people who were sick or blind or deaf or rejected by people around them or hopeless or empty or even dead. We see people trying to show your Son, Jesus, that they do life better than others. Forgive us, Lord. We see that you do not reject them. But your son tells us that they can be people who can follow him. Oh, Father, what we learn from Jesus is that we cannot do anything to make ourselves more connected to you unless we trust you with everything, including our whole lives. Help us give ourselves into your care, O oh Father. Jesus, we want to be with you. Send us your spirit so we can be open to your presence in our lives, watching what you can and want to do through us. Help us receive you the complete gift of Christmas present and for the future. Show us the way to live so that we can be used by you and given by you to people around us. We praise you, O oh God, that you give us just enough for the day, enough love for us to share what is in our hearts for others. As people who are gifted by God, we now come together in prayer for others. We love you, O oh God. Hear our prayers so that people will come to see Jesus as a gift for their lives. Bless the families of all who seek purpose in life, that the promise of Jesus will be received in their lives. Give parents the desire and the delight to love and lead their children, that their children will know love and safety in this life, and the certainty of your love for them in every condition of life. Open doors of care and compassion. That families will receive the necessary food, water, and housing for children to grow according to your will, Father. Lord, teach us to share what we've been given. Bless all widows, widowers, orphans, and broken families with your mercy. Give them joy in knowing that you want to bring them back from the darkness of sin, failure, and guilt. Thank and praise you 
for the healing given to James Williams after surgery, that he will be drawn to you as he learns how to respond to the challenge of life with a faith that grows in you, O oh Father. Continue with your healing for Diane Glover after her bout with COVID. Thanks and praise for watching over Emmanuel Beale after being removed from the ventilator and for assuring his mother of your ongoing presence in her life. Guide the Bodley brothers as they care for their mother and father Barbara, and Reverend Arthur Bodley. We pray for Barbara that the treatments will bring healing to her body according to your will, Father. Keep them all under the protection of your wings, that the Holy Spirit will direct thoughts and decisions they're called to make. We thank you, Father, for bringing the variety of vaccinations into the world struck with the pandemic. Guide the distribution of this vaccine, that the hope for eradicating the coronavirus will come to citizens around the world. Help us, we pray, the desire to do the things required for public health safety until we can come together more freely as community and church. Protect frontline workers, bus drivers, police, emergency medical technicians, truck drivers, grocery store workers, doctors, nurses, janitors, all other essential workers of Father, that they will be able to do their work in dangerous and unhealthy conditions. Watch over them every day, that they will be able to return to their families safely. Oh Father, we come to you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we receive from you and be ready to share what will bring peace to our lives as we share the peace that passes all understanding with others. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now join our hearts and minds as we now join together in the prayer Jesus taught his disciples and us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now as people who have Jesus and his love in our hearts, receive the blessing God intends for all us at all times. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you, to be filled with his grace. The Lord lift up his presence upon you, give you peace. Amen. So it is that we thank God for this year 2020. It has brought us challenges that is surely the truth. And God the Father wants to bring his peace into the world. Yes, God makes peace break out for those who love, have him in the darkest points of their hearts. I have a story I want to share with you about how God breaks peace into this world. It's a story from the First World War. On cold Christmas Eve in Belgium in 1914, the sound of singing came out of the dugouts, came out of the trenches where soldiers were dug in. Strains of the carol Silent Night were sung in English and then were sung in German. Soldiers who earlier in the day had been shooting at one another laid down their weapons and emerged from their trenches to shake hands in the no man's land between, exchanging Christmas greetings and spontaneous gifts from their rations. That ceasefire continued through the next day, Christmas Day, as the soldiers talked and laughed and even got to the point of even having a soccer match together. That was the Christmas truce of 1914 that occurred during World War I. It offered a glimpse of the peace the angels proclaimed on that first Christmas long ago. As the angels said to the shepherds, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today a Savior has been born for you. My friends, a Savior has been born for you. Thank you for coming to be with us here at Bethany today. Do not be afraid. Ask the Savior Jesus to be born and live in your heart. The God who gave us this year, 2020, lead us confidently into the year 2021. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.